so tall, I could give a high five to the pilot. Yeah, family tight, I keep small circle like island. Whoa, inbox full of contracts, I sign with a stylus. Yeah, blue faces blowing up like violet. Talk about the things they're gonna say when they see me, and when they see me, they just dab me up and say good to meet me. I keep it going, flowing over this and make it look easy. Easy for me to say I do this every day of the week. And me get to be the one they talk about when all said and done with it. I'm the feature that they want, but then they don't wanna come with it. I'm a scene still a seat, fill up, blow up the numbers, and I ain't leaving no crumbs. So you know I'm done with it. I'm a new school vibe with an old soul, oh so great. Stay paid by the boatload, don't go chasing the wave. I'm a rowboat, blow smoke great right through the face of the ozone. Oh no, I got the bag, I'm back to just double it. I'm about to pop the top, I've been bubbling. They want the spot, but I do not cut them in. They trying to plot my drop, they been huddling. <laughs> Feeling so tall, I could give a high five to the pilot. We are three days out from Showtime and we set up all of the gear we're gonna have front of house for video and lighting. Audio is actually separate for a Yamaha console for the whole show. But let's get into some of the gear here. This is the video rack. We got a PC, we have an ATEM 2ME switcher. Then we have some monitors and a whole bunch of converters in there. The Allen & Heath console here is actually used as a MIDI controller to control Mad Mapper. So this is actually motorized faders for video. Then over here is another MIDI controller, and this is just handling some flashes, some cues, some buttons to switch between different assets. This is a Mac laptop running the ATEM software, Companion, and ProPresenter. And then uh, we have our Stream Deck over here, which can control our ATEM switcher for things like iMag, playback of videos, certain graphics, etc. In the middle here, we have our visualizer. This will not be set up for the actual front of house during the show, but for programming, it has come in handy. It's been very useful, and we have an Ultra Studio that's allowing us to run our video input from our Mad Mapper system into Depends, which is the visualizer we're using. For lighting, we have the Grand MA3 light. This is gonna handle all of the lighting for the show, and because we're only a few days out, we did decide to set up all of our lighting and so now we can program, it's all set up in the back, we'll go check it out in a sec. We can program based on the visualizer, based on the actual lights going on stage, and run our whole show from here. So let's go take a look. This is a PTZ we set up just to send signal into the other room. We will have other Blackmagic cameras using on-site for iMag, DJ shots, things like that. This is all the lighting that's gonna go on the stage. We actually have a couple more fixtures we're adding during day two when it's all DJs. And then we have another 16 fixtures going around the tent for a stage wash. On the front of the stage here, we're going to have six of these Mavericks, big lights going on the front of the stage. We then have some washes across the top and four beams going on the sides. That'll give us a good mix of fixtures to play with during the show. We're gonna have another two Mavericks sitting on the drum riser when there's a band. Those will get moved off and there will be a video wall facade for day two when it's all DJs. So now with all that, let's get into how everything's wired. So the way we're running a Grand MA 3 all the way in a different room getting signal to here is this guy. This is an Alation Artnet node. It outputs eight different universes. We're only using two of them for the lights we have right here. And this is how we're going to run just one cable from front of house all the way to the stage and have all of our control for all of our lighting. Instead of me talking about lighting, let's hear it from Brian, who's actually gonna be running lights during the show. All right, so we're running everything on this Grand MA3 light. We have about 40 fixtures total. They're all moving lights and none of it's pre-programmed. So we're doing it all busking style. What we like to do before the show is kind of set it up, make some basic looks. We do most of the programming on site, but um, just kind of having your basic setup in this 3D view from Brandon is very helpful. One cool thing to notice, I actually have control of the LED wall here. You know, Brandon has to step away or if he's just not in sync with me, I can kind of control everything, can control the speed here and I can bring it down. If I'm doing a blackout and I want the stage to be dark, and then bring everything up at the same time, I can do that as well. Show off what you can control in terms of video. We have linked Grand MA with Mad Mapper. So as Brian either does the dimmer or does colors. Yeah, dimmer, little delay on that 3D here, but I can flash. Yeah, it's in real time here on the ATEM switcher. I can black it out completely, bring it back. If I want it green, for example, make it green to make it match whatever my uh, lighting scene might be. 
Yeah. Awesome. And because he has motorized faders over there and is controlling it, the yeah. motorized fader from the Allen and Heath, as he changes, I'll be able to see the changes in real time. I'll also be able to see the changes up here on screen. So it's another way we stay in sync without having to talk to each other during a show. It's usually pretty loud, so we don't want to be screaming the whole time. And with that, we're gonna finish programming, pack it all up, and get on site. Feeling so tall, I could give a high five to the pilot. Yeah, family tight, I keep small circle like island. Whoa, inbox full of contracts, I sign with a stylus. Yeah, blue faces blowing up like violet. All right, we're here on site, the festival. It is the last day, and this is the setup we have. Brian on lighting. We have the video rig here. We did switch sides. We have the wall up and ready to go. If I jump over here, you can see the master dimmer pulling up DJ content. We got all the iMag screens. So if I want to change to different shots here, I could pull up the DJ shot, fade him on screen, put him in the corners. We can also change how we're showing off the DJ shot, etc. So. All the control here, don't need to go too into detail about how every little thing works. These two are MIDI controllers for Mad Mapper. We have ATEM software. We also have Pro Presenter running on this screen so I can run playback of videos for sponsor loops, things like that. And then we have the rack uh, and everything here. This is the video wall processor. So that is how I am doing a left and right screen and Mad Mapper is combining them. It's ME1 and ME2. And then with the video wall facade, uh, I just do all of that work in the processor to put it in the correct space so it lines up with the wall behind it. So let's just walk over to audio real quick. We have audio here. Again, I'm not the best audio guy, so I'm not gonna dive into everything here, but just so you guys can take a look. This is audio front of house control. Monitor world is over there uh, at stage right. So that's monitors for all the artists and DJs and things like that, as well as all the bands that played here. And then we have cameras, of course, black magic cameras. So we got the Ursa Broadcast G2 and the Studio Cam uh, second generation as well. And then on top of the video wall, we have a micro cinema camera doing a crowd shot. And then we also have a GoPro doing a DJ shot. Let me show you what the DJ shot looks like real quick. If I pull up the DJ shot on screen, I'm actually running it into Mad Mapper. So if I pull down my graphics here, I can go and I could pull up just the DJ controller, which is a really cool shot when the hands are in it and things like that. But it's actually a feed into Mad Mapper. I'm not just running it straight into the ATEM. This way I can take the graphics feed, which is with the DJ in it, and I can crop out just the turntables. So that's what's cool about doing this and why I have a deck link in the computer to bring that video in to Mad Mapper to basically morph the image in real time. Let's go backstage and check out some of the stuff happening over there. All right, so this is Monitor World. This is for all the band members, the speakers on stage facing the band all the mic stands, the cables, everything they need to communicate. One of my favorite things about this whole setup is their comm system because they want to be listening to their mixes. So if they need to talk to each other, they can literally ring this with their comms and talk to each other from front of house to monitor world. I think, I just think that's funny. So on the last day, it's all DJs, uh, obviously CDJs and whatever the talent brings on as well. GoPro shot to see them mix. We also have a full scale GoPro shot for iMag and our camera feeds going to our tents and our production trailers so they can see a multi view of what's going on both on stage and in the crowd so everyone can stay on time. This wall behind me is 24 panels wide, three panels tall, but these panels are 100 centimeters tall, 50 centimeters wide, so they're kind of double stacked. If this was square panels, we'd be talking six panels tall, 24 panels wide, and it's at a five degree curve to go around the whole place. Uh, and then we have eight panels in front of me that are doing the video wall facade. The structure of this wall is actually just eight 10 foot sticks of bolt truss, 
and it's going along the top. This way, we don't have to hang the wall and the curb of the wall actually helps with support structure and stability. So obviously it's very well sandbagged and ratcheted down, but this wall is not going anywhere and stands up on its own without going overboard on all of our extra structure. And it'll make the wall building it and tearing it down really easy. All right, so now we're coming off stage. This is backstage. So first thing is we set up a TV here that's not on, so I should turn that on. There it is. So we have a TV here and it's showing a clean multi-view. That means there's no labels, ATEM labels or anything like that on it. We have a tight shot, a wide shot, a crowd shot, and then the time so we can stay on time between acts. So that's what we see here and it's actually going a couple different places. We have artist tents, we have production office and we put it back here because there is a lot of posse and things like that that do crowd around. They're not seen, but they want to see what's happening. So we get this for them. So these are most of our dead cases, a couple extra cables. We just keep them all behind the video wall back here. We do have the video wall. You can see what that looks like from the back. All right, over here we have dressing rooms, bathroom and production office. We'll sneak in here real quick. So we have the TV in the production office. And the reason I have the Yeti battery out is because when we power down the generators every night, it also kills the power to these trailers. So in order to charge all the walkie talkies and keep things like Wi-Fi network switches alive, I just power it off the Yeti. So yeah. You good? Yes. Cool. And lastly, let's check out the artist tents. So we do have our power. That's a lighting distro. We have two spider boxes for the video wall. keeping things covered from possible rain, raining sideways. All the generator power is over here. The interesting thing about these two generators is they're actually linked. So they're linked together. So if one dies, it puts all the load on the other one. If it runs out of gas, if there's a problem, if there's a short, that's how that works. And then it's all split out between pretty much everything here for City Stage. We have artist tents with AC, we have trailers with AC, with the dressing rooms, the bathrooms, uh, just everything we need to run a concert. All right, so right now we are in the prepping area for all the artists. The bands kind of have their own sections here. If they want to come out into the common area, we do have TVs, again, with the multi-view so they can see what's going on. We don't need any audio through here because the stage is right there and you can hear everything. But that is the city stage uh, for this festival. All right, so we're actually under the stage right now. I just thought you guys want to see what it looks like. We store a lot of road cases under the stage. Usually, uh, you don't really worry too much about cables. You kind of just run them. Anyone who's back here is usually a tech if they're actually under the stage. And we know not to just crush cables with cases, so we don't have to worry about cable ramps. Uh, but yeah, it's all just storage underground. This stage is technically five panels wide and I think eight panels deep. So five panels wide, five times eight is 40. So 40 feet wide. The way this stage is built is pretty much every other panel has legs. And then on the four corners of a panel that has legs, there are teeth for all of the panels that go around it. So that way you have enough strength for the stage, but the least amount of legs you need to still be secured, which then gives you all this open space to store your cases, walk underneath, etc. We're only about three to four feet tall on this stage, but we do have other stages that go much higher and you can walk underneath. And when you do that, it's called the underground, which means you actually have stations for talent and things like that, walking with hallways under the stage. Got a nice D&B audio rig, so been plenty loud for what we need today. So I'm standing where the DJ was yesterday. We had him on a one foot riser in front, boiler room style. And that way when we had all the bands, we could do all the changeover happening over here on stage. Then later that day, we just lifted the DJ riser up, moved it on stage at our video wall facade, and we were good to go. That was really helpful to not have to have the DJ in the way up here, because these go-go bands do have 17 people on stage, so it can get pretty tight 
especially with all the instruments. Yo, I know a lot of people praying for my downfall, but the only thing that I'll be down for is being top five, but like down four. I'm down to earth like the ground floor, but I've been flying so long, I tend to ask people, what's the ground for? Man, I'm only headed up, see my flow volcanic, it's the fire I erupt. Heard the fans getting rowdy because they haven't had enough. You know I'm running the city, you just running out of luck. Yeah, I said that with my chest, I flow hard, it's no wonder they easily impressed. I'm so far, but I'm always coming back with something fresh. I never rest, where you'll never catch this ego in a nest. I invest my time in a booth, I find a piece. I used to piece the boom in my mind. My ex knows this, let me expose this. She left cause she don't wanna be with an explosive man. I'm just feeling so tall, I could give a high five to the pilot. Yeah, family tight, I keep small circle like island. Whoa, inbox full of contracts, I sign with a stylist. Faces blowing up like violet Okay, so this is what's happening. Brian is running color control and dimmer control over the video wall. That's why it's changing colors right now. So he's running that from Grand Ame over Artnet to a network switch. I'm taking a universe into Mad Mapper, specifically Universe 10, and we've mapped the channels in my Mad Mapper software for dimmer master RGB. You can see it right there at the bottom. So because he's doing a color fade and I have feedback on this Alan Heath, it's moving. Brian, if you trigger specific colors, he can change the speed of the colors and everything. Can you change, like make it like specifically red, green, blue? Yeah, so green, blue, green, blue, red. Yeah, so he can control all that from there. Here, Brian, go ahead, do it again. So he's controlling the color. You can see it there. Everything's changing in relation to it. Those are the perks. Luckily, this won't really bother me because it's on a different page and I'm pretty much on these two pages the whole day. But that's just pretty trippy when that happens.